Hey guys, this is Adrian and today I just wanted to share with you a process I've been using to back up my DVD and Blu-ray collection. And it all started when I got stuck on a four hour flight and I had nothing to do because it didn't have, well actually the plane did have a movie but it was just really awful. And uh, I was just stuck so I realized, well I have all these movies at home, why don't I put them in iTunes? Turns out that process is a little more complicated than I thought but um, I just wanted to share with you my simplified method after doing all the research, and this is the way that's been working for me to get everything into my iTunes library. And as you can see, I have all of the metadata, I have all of the information attached to the movies, which is the way to go because I'm picky about that stuff. So if you are too, and uh, you're interested in getting your collection backed up digitally, then keep on watching. I should mention that this is definitely for Mac users only, the programs that I'm using uh, they might be Windows compatible, but I haven't uh, used them on Windows. I know iFlex certainly is not. So unless you just want to try to learn a couple things, then um, otherwise you may want to save yourself some time. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with it. Well, first things first, if you're a Mac user and you're going to be backing up Blu-rays, obviously Macs do not have built-in Blu-rays, so you're going to need to buy an external one. And I trust the guys at Otherworld Computing since they do so much testing to make sure their products are compatible with Macs and this is the Blu-ray drive that I got from them and it's worked fairly well. Um, I was having some problems with getting it connected here and there but I think that was my USB ports acting up. I do have an old computer but uh, otherwise this has worked fine. It's managed all the Blu-rays I've thrown at it so far so I definitely recommend this drive. It's only 60 bucks as well. You can't beat that. Now these are the two programs that we'll be starting out with to burn the Blu-rays. Make MKV and iFlix. Um, Make MKV comes in a 60 day trial, but then after that it costs $50. iFlix comes with a 15 day trial and then costs $20. And a couple programs we'll be using later are Handbrake and Subler, but those are both free. So we'll talk about those later. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pop in the disc here. And while we wait for that to load, uh, let's just go over some of the preferences in Make MKV. So head on up to the top bar, click Make MKV, and then Preferences. And you're going to want to change the destination of the movie so that you know where it's actually going. And one thing I found out after backing up several Blu-rays is that there's a ton of extra content on them. And this setting here allows you to filter out any content that doesn't meet a certain length requirement. So I have it set at 2700 seconds, which when I did a Google search it said it was 45 minutes. didn't sound right, but... It's been working, so um, that's allowed me to filter out a lot of the special features because I'm really just aiming for the movie. But if you want that other stuff as well, feel free to leave that unchanged. Okay, so now we have the Blu-ray loaded. Just go ahead and click the drive, and it'll start to scan the disk. Some of you might be wondering if this is even legal, and actually, for my research, it is 100% legal if you own the actual disk and you're just creating a backup copy for yourself. So don't hold me to it, the law could change, but from what I found this is completely legal if you're using it for your own personal use and you do own the movie disk itself. Okay, so now we have our option and you can see that there's really only one option to choose. So we're gonna twirl that down and each movie is gonna have um, all sorts of special things like subtitles, which I certainly don't need. So I'm gonna go ahead and check those off. One thing that I've always uh, made sure to check is this True HD 5.1 button, which I believe is surround sound audio, and we definitely want that. So go ahead and keep those two boxes checked. You can twirl things back up, and then click this little button over here on the right to get it started. Now, as you can see, it's going to take quite some time to finish, and the average size for a Blu-ray is going to be between 20 and 40 gigabytes, depending on what you included. So uh, I'd recommend going and doing something else in the meantime, otherwise... I honestly believe that it, it will move slower if you watch it, so go do something else for a while. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to speed it up and cut to the end. Okay, so now the movie is done. We ended up getting a file looking like this. It's probably going to be named something wonky. So before we bring it into iFlix, which is where we're going to get all of our metadata and movie imagery and all that fancy stuff that you're going to want to see in your iTunes library. So go ahead and just rename this to what the movie is, and that will help iFlix recognize it right away. And just simply drag it into this black area here. And what do you know? So it found it, and you'll see that it's got uh, the actors, it's got the directors, everything in there. 
it pulls its information from the movie database. So uh, it's pretty awesome. So uh, from there, you're going to want to select your compression preset. Um, and since we're doing Blu-rays, uh, I would suggest using the new Apple TV and iPad preset, which creates it in 1080p. Now, if you want to have all your movies collected somewhere else outside of the iTunes database, you can go ahead and select your destination here. But what I was doing was selecting this Add to iTunes button and moving the original to Trash. And inside of iTunes, I have the preferences set to collect and organize everything within my iTunes library. You can keep your iTunes media folder organized and copy files to the iTunes media folder when adding to the library. And this will just have all of your files organized in one location. And I have over time preferred to do it that way because it's just much easier to keep track of. So that being said, this was the best option for me because it adds it to the iTunes library. It goes where it needs to go and it just moves the original to the trash. So really, it's kind of a one-stop shop. So go ahead and click start and it'll go into a queue like this. And this generally takes between two and three hours. Uh, it takes quite some time to encode the Blu-ray video, but uh, it reduces the size dramatically and it embeds all of that metadata. So it's definitely worth it. iFlix, I think, is the coolest part of the process. Okay, so now that we've covered Blu-rays, let's go ahead and jump into just uh, doing regular DVDs. And that's actually a much easier process. Um, and you can get this software called Handbrake, which is free. Um, you just insert a DVD into your tray and uh, it should automatically recognize it. Uh, if it doesn't automatically recognize it, uh, just go to source and click on your DVD tray. Open. Now there's a lot of settings here and it's probably overwhelming, but unless you're a techie person, I would just recommend uh, doing what I'm about to suggest. I, I was experimenting with each of these templates um, and realized that since I'm burning a standard DVD, I wanted to get the best quality I could from it. And these presets uh, didn't really apply to me because I just wanted to have at least a foundational copy that I could create um, new compressions with in iFlix. So what I've done is just use high profile and I uncheck the large file size button, which um, can make the file larger and it doesn't really add that much quality to it, I noticed. So select high profile, unselect large file size, set where you want to save the movie to. You can also preview the movie here in case you have a, a disc that has both full screen and widescreen. You can make sure you have the right copy. Um, but really, that's those are the settings that have been working really well for me and I'm a stickler with video quality. So. After setting that, just go ahead and click start and it's gonna start ripping your DVD. And this process is uh, much quicker than doing Blu-rays as you can probably imagine. But I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the end uh, for the sake of time. All right, so here we are. We have our DVD ripped and uh, we're in the same place using iFlix. So go ahead and drag it over to iFlix. This time I'm not gonna rename it just so I can show you what to do when it doesn't recognize it. Um, so yeah, so it's not automatically recognizing it. And what you do is click on this little magnifying glass here where you can search for details. And this will allow you to search and type in um, the name of the movie and it'll pull up several options like this. So it doesn't really matter what one you pick. Uh, it's all the same thing. But if you click OK, then it'll pull the information. We get what we want. Now here's a key tip that you want to change in these settings when you have an SD video because this will drive you crazy in, in your iTunes library. Um, change the definition here to SD, otherwise iTunes will list it as high definition when it's not. So uh, you definitely wanna change that for the standard def movies that you're ripping. Now the standard def rips are only gonna be around a gig, and to me, that size is fine. So what I was doing with compressions was just simply creating an iTunes compatible file. And that renders extremely fast because all iFlix is doing is embedding the, the metadata and all the information into the clip as well as making it iTunes compatible. So it's using the same compression and it's not going to be making it smaller, but um, it's including all of the cool information. So if you go ahead and click start, you'll see just how quickly this will go. All right, so we've pretty much covered all the bases. There's just one step left. You may have noticed uh, I had the program Subler in the list and you may be wondering what the heck that is for. Subler is more of a manual way to edit the metadata of your movie files. And the reason that this may come in handy is if you forgot to check 
the SD box when you are encoding a regular DVD, and then it'll be showing up as high def in your iTunes library. What you need to do is just find the video file that iTunes is referencing, um, right click it, and open it with Subler. Go to other settings and change it to HD no. And then if you just hit Command S to save it, um, the file will just automatically update. But what you may need to do is re-import it into iTunes. So you would delete it out of your iTunes library and re-import this movie so that you get that HD box to go away. So guys, that is the basics of backing up your DVD and Blu-ray collection. If I forgot to cover a certain area or you're having any problems, feel free to post in the comment box and I'll get to them as soon as I can. So if there's one thing left that I needed to say, I think it's uh, live long and prosper.